at reverb. All right, here we are. Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Soul Solution Sunday, where the soul and is the everyone. solution. <laughs> I'm Lisa Warner. I'm the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing and co-author of Navigating the Clickety Clack, How to Live a Peace-Filled Life in a Seemingly Toxic World with my co-author Kathleen Bradley and publisher Keith Leon. So today, Kathy and Keith are here with me again as my regular guests on Solution Sunday. And today we were going to talk about expecting the unexpected as we move into a whole new way of living on this planet. So please join us, sit back and relax. And if you're on Facebook, please feel free to comment and chime in. So good morning, Keith and Kathy. Good morning. Good morning. This is great. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having us. We love I I love this day once a month when we get together and talk about so real fun. stuff. Um, <laughs> nice to be with like-hearted individuals. <laughs> exactly. We've got Brenda on this morning. Good morning, Brenda. So Kathy, you were, the, you were the one that kind of came up with this topic for today. So tell us a little bit about how you ended up coming up with this topic. Absolutely. So um, the topic is expect the unexpected. And as things are moving along and evolving, we're going to see more chaos and more noise, believe it or not. And that's where the unexpected comes from. It's kind of like, what's going to happen next? Who knows? and allowing that to occur. And when I say things are gonna dissolve and fall apart, for the people that are listening, just check in with yourself. Do you go into a place of fear or maybe you become tense? Like, uh-oh, wait a minute, what's coming down the pike? Because when we go into that place, right? We're going into that rigid instead of, oh, wow. Like what else is possible? And knowing that at this point in, time, the evolution moving up, the lights pouring in and it's moving up all of these programs and all of the matrices that no longer work for us, right? Mm -hmm. So if we know that we go within and we connect with our innermost highest knowing and we're not in the noise, right? We're that center point in the calm and the storm. And so we allow these changes to occur. And it's kind of like riding a boat down the river, right? If there's a storm going on, you don't want to fight the storm. It's not going to work. But what can you do to allow the storm to, to move you to safety, to offer that safe, harmonious place? And it's by you vibrating to this place of inner calm and peace and harmony and resonance, knowing that fabulous things are coming down the pike and we get to co-create it, right? That's why we're here. So we're here to shine our light and our love and our peace. And then we bring about this new earth, this new place of harmony and peace and joy. And it's all vibrational frequency like we've talked before, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I feel like we were we were born for a time like this and like we literally chose to be here at this time. And so we can either uh, accept it and bring the light and be part of it and be the one that puts out our hand and says, oh, you know, let me help you and lift people up into the light uh, or we can resist and then we'll swirl down into the mainstream media narrative and be <laughs> in fear and scared of everything like <laughs> right? so which which way do we want to go we're like at choice point big time right now <laughs> and that's why i love i love 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 this topic because i feel like there's so many people that are standing and looking do i go right or do i go left this is the light and this is the wormhole <laughs> this is the hole in the ground that scares the crud out of me and this is um uh, another another place another thing uh this is the opposite of worry. This is just 
love and knowing that I always know what to do and when to do it. I know what to say and when to say it. I, I have all the answers are inside of me. I only need with, to go within. And I, yes, I can get through this. I can, I can navigate through this clickety clack. <laughs> and um, yeah, so thanks for bringing this up today. What you thinking, Lisa? This is great. Yeah, it's a wonderful topic. And and speaking of the clickety clack, congratulations on a third best selling volume, Keith. That was awesome this week. He launched his Thank third you. volume. Beautiful work. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I love this. I do love this topic because we as light workers have been like you say you know we came here for this time we came here to change the entire paradigm of earth and when we are able to kind of really step back far enough to see the the history of the planet you know we can see that humanity has been programmed for a really really long time into this false matrix you know i talk about you know i talk a lot about the the matrix not as the matrix like the movie but like the matrix as like a growing medium something that we grow within like crystals grow inside a matrix so if we look at there are like two matrices there's like the living life-giving organic matrix of source and then there's this false artificial matrix that is made up of mind control and and all of the government systems that are designed to keep us small and and separated and in fear so these two matrices are now separating so we can see which way we want to go you know as long as we are moving in the direction of the light and planting our seeds in the light and stating our intention to move into that heaven on earth matrix, that, that layer, it'll be easy to see when we start tapping into the other one <laughs> because the other one doesn't feel good. Nothing about the false artificial matrix feels good because that's the matrix that's designed to steal our life force energy. So we've just been growing up in that that artificial matrix that tells us who we are and what we're supposed to do. And none of that has ever really worked for any of us very well. <laughs> so. You know what's coming through? I remember the story about, I think it was called the No Net Program. And what they did is they had all of these nets in a box. And in the beginning, they had the cover on the box. And so the gnats learned that they couldn't fly, right? They couldn't go above the cover. And then they took the cover off. Well, the, fly, the flies never tried to fly up because they believed, I would, here it is, we have this cover on top of us, we can't go there. So they trained themselves not to move up. And so I kind of see us sometimes as these gnats, right? <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, we've been told we can't go there. And now we have this opportunity where we will be moving into this place of freedom. But first, I, I kind of see us kind of going through this oppressive point where we need to go within and find the freedom that is there so that we can change things. And it's in that belief system of knowing that we can change them and feeling confident in ourselves because we've been in that box for so long. Now it's like, oh, now, okay, here's your freedom. And it's gonna be like, oh, now what do I do? <laughs> so now if we can be okay with that, like, wow, we have this new opportunity, go into that place of imagination where all the possibilities exist. That's where all the great inventions were created. When we play in those, those fields, then we bring in those untapped possibilities and manifest it here. That's one of the reasons why we're all here, to connect with source, to connect with all of these infinite possibilities and then play with it, create. We're each unique creators. So it's gonna be fun when we realize that we are creating and we step out of the noise and the drama and all of the craziness that's going on and will continue. The other thing that I want to share before I pass it on, it's coming through. They're talking about very often we have these ideas running through us of what we want. 
and I want vanilla and I want it with chocolate sprinkles and I want it in this dish, right? So we have this idea. And then all of a sudden we get chocolate ice cream and we have colored sprinkles and that's not what we wanted. And we go into this place of being angry and resistant. Instead of maybe looking at the chocolate ice cream with the colored sprinkles and seeing that this may offer you something that you haven't had before in a greater environment. And so if we can open ourselves to like, yeah, this is what I'd like to have. And there's a big end with this and having the flexibility of seeing from a higher perspective of how something can benefit you in a greater way. I think Keith said it before, this is something greater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's, I love that you used that analogy because the truth is if we, uh, if we dug in with the spoon and tried the chocolate with the colored sprinkles, even if we think we know what chocolate with covered sprinkles used to taste like, and that's why we didn't like it, there is only now and it may be a different company it may be a whole different experience and especially if we went in with the open mind <laughs> to eating the ice cream with sprinkles we may be like this is not what i experienced before at all i actually like chocolate with the sprinkles <laughs> right and uh and then yeah i always uh, when i'm treating or that's the word I use for creating, right? When I'm creating with my words, my life, and what I want to have in that, uh, I love to say this or greater for my highest good because I found over and over and over again, no matter how big I could make it up or dream it, I mean, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if this thing happened? And I mean something that's like meeting this famous person, having them as my personal mentor, right? Kind of like giant things. Uh, even when I think that I have the grandest idea of how it could be, it seems like it's even greater than I even imagined anyway. So I learned to just kind of uh, surrender to that and, and make that part of my creation is this or even greater for the highest good, which is fun because then you are creating the universe being able to surprise you with something even greater. <laughs> but then it doesn't also attach my subconscious conscious mind to a certain outcome because what happens is when i do that then even if i did meet that great person and get them as my mentor it's possible that i'd be like meh and not really <laughs> see the blessing or enjoy the blessing right of that if it didn't happen exactly the way that i dreamed it mm -hmm. that's all i'm saying if let's say i did get him as a mentor but it happened in a different way than I thought, but I was attached mm -hmm. to that other way. So I was actually disappointed, even though I got this incredible result. Exactly. That's interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or even if you get that mentor, but there's a different mentor that would actually be even better for you, you know, then you, you miss out on that opportunity. So keeping that, keeping the doors open to all these possibilities and greater. You know, and I love that, you know, Keith, you've developed such a, an incredible trust with the universe. And once you once you put that out there, it's like, this is what I wish to create. And you get clear on that, you plant that seed, and then you just wait for it to grow because you know that that seed is going to pop up. Like, you don't know what day it's going to pop up. You don't know <laughs> what it's going to look like as it's popping up but you know that that's coming. So you can just kind of sit back and mm. relax and expect your seed to germinate. Yeah, the perfect example of that was when I uh, was wanting to attract my perfect mate and I had done all the, per the work that I needed to do to become all the qualities that I wanted <laughs> in my perfect mate, but I wrote down all, every quality and everything that I wanted to attract. So I was planting the seed, planting the seed, and I read it and I prayed on it and I really memorized it and then I put it away. And then exactly like you said, I just relaxed knowing it's done, this or even greater for the highest good, and then I went out into the world. And uh, and I knew that I was, I did get clear though, I was gonna meet her at my spiritual center, Agape. So I started going to both services. So I didn't wanna like sleep in, sleep in and pause the whole process by three months. Cause I was 
<laughs> she went to an early service and I went to the late service. So, uh, so I just kind of put it out there. And one of the things was her light will enter the room before she does. So that's kind of a huge ask, right? Yeah. However, however, I know that anything that I say and, and put it out, you know, it always comes back to me. So I just believed that would happen. Went about my business, went to both services months later, Easter Sun, or, uh, 8, 8, 99, <laughs> August 8, 1999, standing at Agape, talking to a friend, look, looked over at the door and literally this light, some, the door opened and this light came through the door and then then in walked Mara. So, uh, so I knew <laughs> that that was her before we even spoke a word because of that specific thing that I asked for to show me that it was her. So, uh, so it's amazing, you know, what can happen. <laughs> even, even like there was time when I would have never asked for such a thing because I wouldn't even believe such a thing but so many great things that had happened in my life by then that it was like ah, that's not, wouldn't be a big deal to at least think I would feel the light coming you know <laughs> maybe I won't see it but I'll, you know no I will see it and then I just got clear and then it happened so pretty amazing stuff so what one thing helped you to be open and to ask you there's something that happened. yeah yeah what was that yeah, the shift. Um, yeah. Well, mm, well, I started making the list originally mm -hmm. of what I wanted to attract. And then I realized at one point I have to be this list because like attracts like. People say opposites attract, but the only time that that's true is external qualities. Like I love to dance and she doesn't, or she, she loves the theater and I love the movies. Or, mm -hmm. you know, opposites attract is surface stuff, but quality is always the same every time. So I looked at the list of qualities and the things that I was demanding from the universe and said, am I that? Mm -hmm. And there were a few things on that list that I was like, if I'm honest, no, I'm not that. So how can I ask for that? Well, then I have to become that. So I had to do the work that was required for me to become that. So one of the things I said was honest. And I was in TV production and the two owners of the business were constantly having us lie to people on the phone saying they're not available or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they told us to say, we would say. And so that was one thing I needed to clean up. I'm like, no, I'm lying every day. I can't say I'm honest. How can I attract mm -hmm. someone that's honest if I'm lying every day, even if it's for them? And so I had to go face my bosses and say, I will not lie for you anymore. I can say you're not available because you're editing or you don't want to speak with them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be happy to tell them the truth, but I will not lie for you anymore. And I don't want any of my team members to have to do it either. Mm -hmm. You know, my assistant. And, uh, and they were just like, and I said, think about it. Like if we get caught in a lie, how does that reflect on your business? And this business mm -hmm. is so small. If somebody says, do you know there are a bunch of liars over there? How quick we're done. Mm -hmm. We're over. And they were just like, wow, thank you. Wow, thank you for bringing that up. Okay, all right, all right. And so was I was good. able to clean it up, and it shifted wow. the whole the whole energy of the place. <laughs> wow, and re good. as a result. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm, I think that's a really good point. Um, doing the work ourselves of what we'd like to attract, because very often uh, I'm aware of people saying I want. And it's kind of like, well, if we're not in alignment with what I want, then it ain't happening. <laughs> so what do I need to do <laughs> to clear up my, myself? It always comes back to us, doesn't it? it it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And even working with clients, it's so cool how we all resonate and are working on the same things, I find. It's really interesting. You know, if it's, I came here to learn all about self-love. Very interesting. That's who a lot of the clients are. It's like, yeah, let's play with how to remember that we love ourselves and how can we best do that? Mm. Yeah. And being true to ourselves and not necessarily um, doing or being what the outside says. That's one of the big things I've learned. You know, you know, you get married, you'll be happy. You have this job, you'll be happy. You make money, you'll be happy. It's kind of like, <laughs> not necessarily let's just be happy because we can and then it all comes to us you know you have the 
marriage of someone with 38 years and, or you have a lovely house, or you have good friends and things that really matter? Mm, that's probably one of the very first answers I ever got when I started meditating and then I finally received you know, finally nailed it <laughs> where I was receiving answers because I got rid of all the noise. One of the first answers was, you know, everything, you know, is it's backwards, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Everything that, that the outside world has been saying, just think the opposite of that. And that's how it is. Mm -hmm. So like the, our world, our ref world is a reflection and a mirror of who we are and who we be and how we show up and what we say. What do you mean? <laughs> a mirror, right? <laughs> And uh, yeah, and that was the first thing. It was kind of like everything you know, it's backwards. It was one of the first messages I got. And that was like, <laughs> at the time. Exactly. Yeah, that what? Is... <laughs> what? I know Lisa always talks about that, right, Lisa? Yeah, we talk about the, the reverse matrix, that the energy is flowing backwards. We've all been trained into these ideas that make us small, that make us feel less than, that make us feel in, unempowered, that make us feel guilty or ashamed or worried or frightened. And mm -hmm. as the soul, that's not who we are. And that is not a state of being that we would ever intentionally generate for ourselves, but it has been generated for us. And it starts right, you know, basically it starts right out of the womb where, where we are being told, you know, we're being taken where, wherever the parents want to take us. And we're, we're told to now, now you have to go to school. Now you have to go to church. Now you have to sit down and shut up. Now you have, and yeah. we're, we're never seen. The soul isn't seen, you know, as right from the get go. It's like, oh, look at this pretty little baby. <laughs> But they're not seeing the grand infinite being the soul that has has shoved itself into that little tiny body and you know to come in here and it's really never honored as the soul it's like well we're gonna have to teach you the ways of the world it's like wait a minute let's find out who this little being is and why they're here and where they're from and you know what's their mission on this planet <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we popped yeah, out was, of our inner knowing right away. Yeah, I, I always share when I'm speaking that, you know, you're a baby and everybody's like, oh, they're talking to you in baby, ooh, 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 ga, ga, baby language. And they're being like so sweet. And then and then you're a toddler and you get up on your knees and you're crawling and they're just like, oh, you're so cute. You're crawling. Good job. And you step up on one foot with one knee up and they're like, you can come on. Yeah, you got it. You can get up. You can get up. And then you stand up and they're like, yes. And you take the first step and they celebrate you. And then you take the second step and you reach out to touch something and they go, no, no. Don't, don't touch that bad. And that's where the negative feedback starts. The second you know how to walk, it starts. And then you start to notice the TV and every show and everything is, is to point out, you know, his murder, mayhem, emergency, drama, you know, like, uh, and every commercial you have ring around the collar and, you know, get this car and you'll be the greatest person ever and eat this food and you'll have the greatest thing. And everything is like, what's wrong with you? And you have to have these products to be better and greater than you already are. And it's like, man, it starts from the second you take the first step and and turn on that TV and it's just streaming in, streaming into your subconscious. So thank God, you know, that we live in a time unlike our parents where we had experiential growth workshops. We had uh, books, you know, books that helped us process these these things and get through them and work through our stuff and find out that we have a subconscious mind that we need to re reprogram <laughs> right find out that our life is a mirror find out that our words and thoughts and actions create our life like they didn't have any of that they were just doing the best that they knew because their parents who weren't great either <laughs> were the ones that taught them right and so it's like they were doing the best that they could do even though it didn't always show up in a great way to us they didn't have what we have like i think we our generation sometimes uh people kind of take that for granted 
you know, and they're like still carrying around mama drama and daddy drama and being mad for what they said and what they did. And it was like, they didn't have what we had, you know? And sometimes when they say that ugly thing, that was actually them loving us the best way that they know how. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in a workshop and there was a woman who was talking about uh, growing up in the 50s and every time that she got dressed really nice and she felt good and she went to go out, her father would say, you look like a whore, go change your clothes now, you're not going out like that. And that wrecked her and she was still carrying that in 2016 or 17 when we did this this mm-hmm. seminar and I go, oh my God, he was loving you so much. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I go, when he said that to you, what he was saying was, you look beautiful, so beautiful that I'm afraid that if you go out looking that beautiful, that some man will take advantage of you, some man may hurt you, he may rape you, and I will not be there to protect you. This is this is driving me crazy. I won't be, I can't go out there and protect you and you look gorgeous <laughs> right and, and and then i'm scared and i don't want to sit here for the next seven hours on this recliner freaking out hoping that you're okay would you please go put something on and look less attractive going out the door you know in the 50s like he didn't have the, the words to be able to say that he wasn't taught the words to say that he was taught like by his father to go and snap at you and, uh, and she was just like in tears and was just like, oh my God, wow, he was just loving me. She was like, came up after and said that was that's such a, the switch just flicked when I said that. And then she could see all the other times and all the other places of the things he said. And then she looked at it from that perspective and realized that he was loving her all along. He just didn't have the words to say it. I think that's a beautiful point. And when I... I see life and everything that happened. Um, I see it as happening for me, not to me. And it's that switching it. And when I see that maybe my dad, when he was critical, that brought up for me an insecurity that I got to work on. That if I didn't have him as my teacher, I wouldn't have learned that. So when we see all of these people, and very often there are family members, right? <laughs> and they teach us these amazing gifts. And when we can see it from that perspective, from that higher place of love, it's kind of like they're not doing anything to us. It's there to teach us of maybe if it triggers us, it's something that we need to work on. So maybe it was brought up when I was little and it happens again and again and again, because that's what I'm looking at and I'm insecure, right? But then if I look at it and say, oh, wow, I can switch that. And I am secure and I am confident. And I know that I know that I know. Well, maybe that's one of my lessons that I came here to learn in this lifetime. And that I can blaze the trail, so to speak. And then I can show other people because I've experienced as well. It's kind of like if I'm not an alcoholic, I can't relate to an alcoholic about not drinking right so it's it's kind of pretty cool the way it all works <laughs> the divine plan uh yeah it, it's all beautiful mm. yeah i saw a meme that says says exactly what you're saying just the other day it says when you're finally ready to heal and create the biggest positive shift of your life you'll begin to see that everyone you'll begin to see everyone as your teacher especially those that trigger you. Wow. Mm-hmm. See if I can put this up. <laughs> oh, cool. <There> you <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, wow, I'm saving that. <laughs> oh, that funny. Was that on your desk because I was talking about it? Uh, no, I just pulled it up on oh, my, okay. uh, <laughs> in my, in my, in my photos because oh, I just I saved, see. I just saved that the other day. And you were just speaking right to it. So it was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. We're, oh, yeah, that quote. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all of our, any of the stuff that is out of alignment for us, any of this, any of the baggage that we're carrying around that doesn't belong to us, that's not in alignment with our soul, it's going to show up simply because it's in our energy field and anything that's in our energy field we're attracting to us. So then when we attract them, 
the stuff that is not so desirable, we have to just simply look at it and go, oh, wait a minute, how did I attract this? And let me clear out the thing that attracted this so that I don't have to attract it again. <laughs> But most of us have never, ever been taught about energy or being able to see energies or understand that we are actually attracting all of our experiences and all of our beliefs, all of the old programming is still running. So like anything that we believe to be true is going to turn into our experience. So when we're experiencing stuff that we don't want or we don't like, we have to look at our beliefs, you know, like, what am I believing that allowed this to be made manifest. And so these are all these great experiences that show up. And in the moment, it's, you know, kind of caca. But then in the grand scheme of things, it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is my greatest gift. You know, like when I'm going through the whole cancer thing, it was like, holy mackerel, this really <laughs> is awful. But then when I got to the other side, it was like, wow, that was like the greatest learning experience ever. Like I wouldn't trade it for anything because I learned, I gained so much wisdom from that. And it's like, put me on my life path. Like, here's why you're here. This is what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> this is how you can help everybody. <laughs> Yeah, how can you call how how can you call it a blessing even in real time when it looks like a steaming pile of caca? <laughs> right. That's the goal. That's the goal. I see you. You're a blessing. I don't know how yet, but but you will be. So if I call you a blessing now, I'll see the blessing sooner rather than a year later going, "Oh yeah, that was a blessing." You know, <laughs> wouldn't it be great to have that information sooner <laughs> than a year later? <laughs> <laughs> really good point. Yeah. yeah, we don't have to suffer any longer <laughs> than we need to put ourselves in, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Humanity yeah. has been made to suffer long enough. It's time to set ourselves free and really understand that we are the creators. As as the soul, we are little little fractals of source itself. We are source itself, experiencing ourselves in physical form. There's nothing that we can't be or do or have. We are literally unlimited beings who have been living in limitation for a really, really, really long time on this planet. So the limitations are now being lifted. So we are starting to move into this space where we can literally create a whole new earth, a brand new world, a brand new society that we are living in peace and harmony with nature, with the animals and plants, with each other, where we can start living really in dignity and honor and respect and joy and start playing on this planet. <laughs> so I, uh, I agree. I just uh, was drawn to pick a card from the um, Flower of Life deck. And it's talking about remembering. Remember, we have forgotten what it is like to truly feel. Sometimes we mistake any depth of feeling for sadness, any sense of the unknown of, for fear, and any sense of peace for boredom. Accept your remembrance, your awakening, and let it blossom within you. Allow it to enlighten and illuminate your magical inner world, giving direct access to your expanded presence through a greater perception of oneness. There was and is a time when self, soul, and world were one, when you lived in peace with yourself and the world around you. The memory is here in your heart your cells deep inside, underneath what you think is real. Sit quietly, take a deep breath, go within and whisper to yourself, remember, remember. Ooh, <laughs> I love that. I remember asking one of my spiritual mentors like, why, why did we, forget why did we 
Mm. You know, how come we don't remember everything from before? And he's like, what fun would that be? Like, oh. <laughs> you drop into a body and you remember everything. So you'd just be walking around in a body totally enlightened, already knowing that there's life after death, already knowing you can create everything. Already like that, that, that didn't seem like fun. You know, we had that. We already had that. We already had all creation and all knowing and, you know, light and heart music and all the all, everything, all good all the time. Like that's, no, we wanted to, we wanted to try on this body and we wanted to try on what it would be like to love unconditionally inside of a body, but also to be in fear and also to experience anger and being triggered and frustration and war, but bliss and you know <laughs> bliss and and all, every quality we just wanted to experience that and so i mean like what fun would that be if we remembered however so the game is you know to sit down long enough and go within so that you do start to remember pieces parts and pieces and start to put all the parts and pieces together and so really the game is to remember um, but most people will never get to that because they won't sit down long enough to receive the memories or whatever you want to call it, right? Because it really is only now, but uh, glimpses knowing. of, <laughs> and no, knowings of what is or was, depending on what word you want to put on it. Like, like that's the fun. And then putting that into action and realizing, oh, I can create and all and getting all that. Like, that's the, that's the fun. That's the, the journey that it's the, the puzzle of life putting the pieces together and realizing that you are a divine creator and then where do you go from there mm -hmm. and sometimes being frustrated when those around you aren't don't have any of it <laughs> and aren't willing to do any of it <laughs> you know and they're just here to trigger you say thank you to them because you asked them hey in this will you come and show up in this lifetime and and trigger the crap out of me <laughs> would you please do that for me <laughs> hey, would you punch me in the mouth when I, when we're in third grade? Sure, I'd do that for you. That's how much I love you. Like I was like, what? <laughs> like we created. We're here in the physical form. We're very sensual, but unfortunately, I think we've moved out of feel, allowing ourselves to feel all of the above. Like you just said, the frustration, the anger, the shame, the the sadness, and I think um, they're showing me like a river, and allowing all of the feelings of the river to to flow through us and don't edit it. And I think if we can allow that, we don't have to stay stagnant in the river, you know, in that smelly little funky little area. No, we go through and go, oh, okay, that's a little funky. Let's keep going. <laughs> well, let's feel the jive and let's feel the moving. Let's feel the grace, let's feel the ease. Um, but it's in the feeling instead of like this no feeling place, that place of fear where we kind of cut ourselves off and it's, I see everything like from that place of gray. Like it's, there's no color, there's no light. So yeah, I may feel sad one day. That's okay, that's why I'm here to feel all these feelings in this physical form. Like that's part of the gift of being here on earth. So allowing all those feelings to come through me without any judgments, without any expectations and just playing with it all and allowing it all to be. I think that helps and that makes it a more enjoyable ride. <laughs> Absolutely, we're not meant to be stuck with anything. You know, fear, doubt, guilt, shame, blame. If it doesn't feel good, it doesn't belong to us and it's we need to clear it out because you know, we don't need to carry that around, so having all those feelings yeah. for sure. Like there's no bad feeling, but it's just, let's feel it and let's feel it, feel it fully. Let's get rid of it because <laughs> move on to what we're supposed to be moving on to. Well, yeah. And when we feel the, the funky feelings, that's okay too, because it's bringing an awareness to us. So you better than anyone, Lisa, you know, we're into the, the body's wisdom. And a lot of times it doesn't feel good in different parts of our body. And that's our body's wisdom of letting us know what we're thinking, what we're feeling is not in alignment with truth, with source. Mm -hmm. But if we just ignored the feeling and the pain, we wouldn't get to the next step. So we do need to kind of delve into it, see what it, what's the cause, right? Instead of just taking medicine 
that covers it over where you get that gray dullness again, but it's like, oh, what's my belief system that's not in alignment, that's filled with lack and limitation that's causing this? Oh, let me see, let me change that. Hmm, and now I feel better <laughs> in time, right? So we have to be really consistent and uh, vigilant about our new patterns and not flip-flopping. Because when we flip-flop, the universe wasn't quite sure. Oh, they wanted this day. Oh no, wait a minute, <laughs> this day. So if we can be consistent and diligent in what we want to create, that's also really important too. Yeah, you call that holding the light steady. Mm -hmm. um, Keith yeah. is super good at that because he sets his intention and then he knows that that's what's going to happen. So he just holds that intention, clearly knowing that what he's wanting is going to show up. So he holds his light steady enough so that the universe can see the picture of what he wants. And then the universe just matches the photograph, like matches that picture. You know, that's the process of creation. It's actually really, really simple. But it's not easy clearing out all the old programming of doubt and worry and, and all of that. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I love moments like uh, like last Thursday night during the book launch, right? John, John Martini came and I'm asking him, you know, the clickety clack questions. And uh, I love moments like that because when I'm when I'm in front of my mentor and they're speaking, I can hear the words that that made a difference in my life so much that i teach this the same exact thing right so when so when he comes on and he's he's like because the quality of your result and the things that you manifest in your life are based on the quality of your question and then he puts more words on that i'm like hmm, how many times has anybody who known me go oh that's where he got that right and it was it was so cool because there was a few of those where he were the things that he said was like uh, the way that he says the things that I'm that I share because they're the things that have worked for me and in each of my mentors when I hear them speak I'll, I I can go oh that's where I got that and that's where I got that because right, after a while when you have so many mentors it's like well, which one told me that <laughs> right? uh, but it, but I, what I was thinking while the two of you were speaking about is you know people talk about ego and me 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 you know attitude and and we and we attach words to things and so me 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 ego has been pointed at as a bad thing that's bad especially from people outside in the world that aren't doing the work that we're doing <laughs> but if you really think about it it's like when you say it's all it's all about you oh okay well if i if i've done something that makes you think that and point at me and say it in a negative, you know, with a negative attitude, then I apologize for that. But then I'll walk away and then I'll realize like, oh, it really is, <laughs> right? It really is all about me because there's this, this is, I'm creating everything outside of me. Mm -hmm. And I can only really prove that my world is happening and everything else could be a hologram that I'm creating. <laughs> And it really is only me sitting here. Everybody else I just dreamed up and created and making this whole darn thing up. You know, and when I take it to that level of responsibility, then I'm am more selective with my thoughts, am more selective with my words, <laughs> and uh, I am clear about the questions I ask if I realize that everything that I ask of the universe is answered. Ask and answered is is happens, but only every time asked and answered, woo, then I better be careful how I ask. <laughs> And Kathleen, you said that right at the top of the call. You know, when you look, ask the universe, why is this happening to me? The universe says, yeah, why is this happening to you? And keeps giving you reasons to ask why. So really the quality of our questions <laughs> will produce the quality of the answers that we receive. Mm -hmm. And this exactly. I know for certain. <laughs> yeah, which is a great thing to remember if anybody is going to the doctor to ask what's wrong with me, do we actually ever want the answer to that question? Pretty much mm. not. <laughs> no, the first call I make now is Lisa. 
<laughs> hey, Lisa, here's what I got. <laughs> Manifesting. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. So Michelle is asking, how do Keith and Kathy handle personal suffering? Some suffering seems unavoidable. That's a good question. Talking about questions. So for me personally, over this past like year and a half, I had a lot of physical suffering because I was out in Sedona hiking and I fell and I broke my wrist and my shoulder and I had surgery on my back. So I was in that place of deep suffering. And for a portion of it, I was resisting it because I didn't believe that I should suffer. <laughs> So I had a resistance to suffering, which I'd like to bring up because we're like, oh, no, I don't want that. I don't have to play with that. But what I found is rather than resisting it, I had to go beyond it. Mm -hmm. So I found when I was able to see my body as body to nobody to somebody, it's like from this elevated point of view where I know all is in divine order and that I could assist my body. And the body is the densest of all the physical, of all the, excuse me, of all the bodies. We have the mental body, we have the emotion body, we have the spiritual body, we have the physical. The physical is the densest. So it takes the longest to see in physical form. So I had to maintain that on a constant basis that all was in alignment and I also learned that there was a lesson involved, kind of like Lisa was talking about earlier. I would have never gotten the lesson. And for me, what that lesson was about blaming somebody else rather than me taking responsibility. And that has to do with ego, right? Because it's kind of like, oh, I want to save face. So I'll blame the guy for bringing me on the trail that I said I didn't want to go on rather than well, he didn't hit me over the head and drag me up there, right? So I, I resisted it, but then I didn't. So there were a few things. I didn't pay attention to my inner, inner knowingness that I wasn't in that space to be doing that. And I also learned not to blame. So actually, sometimes you do go for, through, I'll say, suffering to learn a bigger lesson that I may not have ever ha had any experience of. And so that was a really wonderful thing for me. And I was, and there's always the end. And I realized that I created this. So I certainly can change this. And it certainly, it was like a light, a light went on. It's like, oh, wait a minute, I can change this. All I have to do is change my belief system on that. And when I see myself as nobody and everybody, it's kind of like, oh, it's all in divine alignment. It's all healing and allowing the process to occur on a daily basis and staying in that moment of knowing that it's all happening in divine order and that I am whole, complete, and perfect. Ta da! Okay, if it's physical, if it's physical, like I'm having physical pain, I'm having physical suffering, anything in the physical body, I will immediately call Lisa. That's, that's my go-to now uh, and work with her. And uh, because I've realized through having 30 years of, you know, chronic pain and, and two phone calls with Lisa, having that dissipate and go away, that uh, she's the one I want to ask if I have something physically going on and go to her. Uh, however, the suffering that I believe that Michelle is asking about is the other type of suffering. That's the one where I feel, and it's and I it's through feelings. It's through something that's happened. It's through that that suffering. Uh, with that, I would say I first allow myself to feel it, because I've learned that any time that I resist something that uh, we would call suffering, it just is like throwing gas on a fire I would just it will just spin out and get worse and worse and worse if I try to resist it so I go all in and I allow myself to feel it 
And while I'm allowing myself to feel it, that's where I'm asking the questions. I'm feel I'm feeling this. Why? What am I? Or what am I to learn from this? Or what is the blessing in this? As I'm feeling it, as I'm in the suffering, I learn to just oh, to feel it, because allowing myself to feel it and then asking those questions helps me get to the answer so much quicker than if I pushed it down or tried to, you know, not feel it and then ask the question, what's what am how what am I to learn from this? It's like I won't receive the answer quickly because I didn't I'm not still in it. So uh, so where sometimes Abraham says if you're suffering and you're really in it, you know, watch a movie or do something to take your brain away from it. Yes, if you're like at point of suicide, <laughs> like that ba- that bad, yeah, put on a movie and take yourself out of it. But short of that, I, I allow myself to feel it, and then that's where I start asking the questions that I really want an answer to. You know, uh, why did what is this? What's in this for me? What am I supposed to learn? You know, those questions you don't want to ask while you're in it. I've learned to be able to ask myself anyway during that time. And uh, and I've just found that the point, the time of suffering has become less and less in being willing to, to do that. Feel it, ask the questions. Feel it, ask the questions. That's been my, really my go-to. And that really came about because... Uh, one of my mentors, Jack Canfield, I said, do you ever have a bad day? Like I just asked him, you know, tell me, do you ever have a bad day? Because I had never seen it. I'd never seen him say, oh, today's been like, it just it never happened for years of, of mentor calls and years of being with him at events and everything. And he said, a bad day? No. Uh, a bad hour? No. A bad few minutes? hell yes and I was like really and he said yeah yeah I mean trust me I'm not perfect I'm not a purpose it's like it does it does come at me but I've just I have so many tools now and I identified a trigger so this is what he helped me do he said I identified a trigger so when I am in ugh, whatever you want to call <laughs> put a name on that suffering anger frustration triggered or whatever uh, his is the same, exact same as mine. When he's triggered, his stomach tightens up. <clears throat> it tightens up. So the second that his stomach tightens up, he said, then he goes to his tools. Then he starts asking the questions. What's this, what's in this for me? What am I? And then he uses he uses all the tools that he has. And then it literally only takes him a few minutes to identify what the what it was about and what he needed to learn. And then he moves through it and he gets to the other side. So. Not everybody has a whole arsenal of all those tools and has already done the work to to say, when my stomach tightens, I will do this. Uh, And that's why we share this any time we can, any place, anywhere, as often as we can. Because maybe now you will. Maybe now you will say, oh, here's what happens to me. I break out in a sweat or whatever. You know, like next time you're in that suffering triggered anger any of that like how does it feel in your body like identify that and then that way then the next time and the next time and the next time that that shows up oh you're like oh i'm in it what tool do i want to use and decide that as well what tool do i want to use to get out of it what has worked in the past oh let me try that and and go to work you know so uh, after allowing yourself to feel it for a little bit that's where i'm kind of different he goes straight to it I, I get the trigger, I really, and then I just go, oh, let me feel this for a little bit. Let me feel this for a little bit. Because I want to remember, if I went to all the work to create that drama and to create <laughs> that frustration and create that suffering, I want to remember what it feels like so that hopefully I don't do it again. So I do allow myself to be in it for a little bit before I go to work. I think that's a it's good a personal point. choice. Yeah, I think the feeling for me is also important. Because as I said before, if we don't feel it, that's why we're here, right? So I think it's our body's wisdom. It doesn't mean we have to stay there. But if I can feel it, and then I have this little, um, I call it foal, F-O-A-L. I feel it. I observe it from that, that neutral point. I accept it. Because like you said, if I resist it, it just, yeah, you put fire on it, right? But if I can accept it and then love it love it for what it's offering me that realization that i wouldn't have had and when i can do it like that 
that it's that process. I think you need to have those tools and those processes in place. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes easier and easier. It's like, oh yeah, I know how to do this. <laughs> and it's through that experience that we do that. Exactly. You know, we've we were never taught tools as children. So we never had any of those tools to be able to process through our emotions or clear out these energies because energy emotions are just energy in motion and you know when these things happen our body is truly our best friend because that's the it's the thing that feels these energies you know and so when our body feels contracted it's that the energy is flowing at us and, and making us resist. And yeah, and because our natural state, when our hearts are open and we're in full on alignment and creator mode, our, our energy naturally flows outward and expands. But then when we're in resistance mode, it flows the other way and we contract. So that's one of the, the tools that I actually use also is to notice the energy and notice which way is the energy flowing? Is it flowing at me or is it flowing from me? And when it's flowing at me, I can feel that resistance where I put my shields up and then I practice like letting my body relax and let go so that I let go of that resistance. So like, there's no more pressure and I just relax. And it does, it loosens it up enough where I can have some clarity <laughs> because when we're in that resistance, mode, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And the mind just goes and goes. So that's, that's one of the tools that I use. Michelle says, great, thank you. Um, great, Kathy, thank you. Very cool, Keith, thank you. Jackie says, um, whatever is coming up is asking to be acknowledged. Yeah, exactly. And she says, our wounds are asking to be loved. Exactly. Yes, because for every question, there is one answer. <laughs> what is that, Keith? <laughs> the answer to every question you tell me <laughs> he loves to say the answer to every question is love love is that's the right answer, just like jackie the said. answer to every question yes <laughs> and uh, remarkably for i used to put that up you know, twice a year on Facebook. And that was the one thing, the one quote that I put up that people would take me to task the most. <laughs> wow. Believe hmm. it or not. Well, that's interesting. Love is, the answer. <laughs> love is the answer to every question. And those who are on this, the path and are doing the work play that we call um, learning to be in co-creation and you know inner growth experiential growth work however you want to label it uh they're all like yes 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 and then uh, my folks that are uh, learning from the outer world and watching mainstream media and all of that would come and say tell me how love pays the rent you know tell me how love this that that love you know and it was all like this kind of earthly visual stuff right you know how does love answer that and so i would answer <laughs> asked and answered uh, and they were just like whatever blah. and i was just like wow interesting interesting so that's great feedback for me so when i get feedback like that then i say oh what's for me to learn in that right what's for me and somebody in somebody saying that and coming at me with that energy and uh and just to share uh, a tool really quick, because um, I'm just being prompted to share it. Uh, when, when somebody, like let's say after an event and I've just spoken, uh, no matter what somebody says when they come up and give me feedback, my answer is thank you for caring enough to share that with me. Mm -hmm. So one time I spoke at an event and this woman just did not like something that I said and she came in and she laid into me with venom. Yeah. And 
and was anger and and you know everybody behind her in line was like what's happening and uh and so i let her and i said i let her complete and i said are you complete and she said yes and i said thank you for caring enough to share that with me Mm. and uh the most interesting thing happened and happens when you say that (laughs) especially to someone in venom uh energy she will well, didn't know how, how to process it so she was like um, well, you're welcome and then she stormed off and then the person behind me was like wow 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 i've never what why would you how, how did you stay so loving how did you stay neutral and how, why would you say thank you for caring enough to share that with me and i said because what she just said was about something that i said and so uh so i will actually think about when I go away and I'm by myself, I'll go within and I'll ask, why did she say that? And I'll find the answer for me. And uh, because all feedback is good feedback, period. So they were just like, okay, <laughs> got the autograph, whatever, moved on. And then the next person behind them didn't even hear it and we were through it. Uh, but I went up to my wife later and I said, wow, man, this lady just laid into me. And she she just said this and this and this. And I, I'm not clear why she said that because I don't see how what I said would trigger that but let me just figure this out and so I went within and then I realized well like I had said something that some people and it was about mainstream media right but I have 17 years in ex- experience in that so I'm not just speaking from nothing I have actual experience about what I was speaking about um, but it but it was just a joke kind of about mainstream media so uh, just to give you some what it was about so uh, so I said what I came to was I never want to say anything that would trigger even 1% of the group in the room. So all I have to do is omit that joke and literally never say it again. And then I won't upset those people. It's not important for me to say that. It just came up in the moment. You know, half the room laughed. But what if there was 20 other people that didn't have the guts to come lay into me like she did? You know, what if I offended 25% of the room with that joke because they love mainstream media? I wouldn't know because not everyone's going to have enough guts to go toe-to-toe with me. So I was just like, oh, I got it. Eliminate that joke, right? And when you're talking about mainstream media, think of it from what if I watched mainstream media? You know, how can I come with more love and not have any energy that would be called political, which is what she said. You know, I didn't appreciate your political view. And that's the only thing I could think of anything close to that was the mainstream media piece because I said nothing about politics. So, um, so I could have done, I could have been like, ah, oh, man, 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 and told a story mm-hmm. in my head about her and her attitude and her energy. And I would have never got the lesson. So the, my answer to everything, no matter what, no matter who says it, no matter what venom they come with, uh, if they punched me in the face at this point, I would say, <laughs> thank you for caring enough to share that with me. And it has, completely changed my world because most of the time whoever you say that to will go and then they'll walk away and then they'll think what did he mean by that Mm -hmm. what did he mean like that by that what a great question Mm -hmm. to ask and then what comes after i don't hear about it but i can guarantee they got something you know something juicy from it (laughs) thank you for caring enough to share that with me (laughs) It's a beautiful tool. Love that. So that was like an unexpected talking about expecting the unexpected. So that was an unexpected feedback. (laughs) But you had the presence to stay there and not have to allow the unexpected feedback to throw you for a loop. (laughs) You know, as so many of us, when we see receive these unexpected shocks, You know, it knocks us off center, it throws us off balance if we don't have that presence, if we're not fully present in our own energy and being able to observe what's happening. So as we move forward into this new world, there are going to be many, many, many shifts and changes and unexpected events that come forward. So the more we can all stay in our present moment and be the observer of the world rather than the reactor (laughs) to the world. We can start to move through with more ease and grace. So cool. 
So thank you both so much for such a great conversation this morning. I always love this time of the month, the third Sunday of the month when we have our very special guests on. So thank you both. So Kathy, what would you have to say for the folks as we wrap up and, you know, and how can people get in touch with you? The last thing that's coming through is remembering, remembering who you are, remembering your love, remembering your light, the balance that resides within you. And you can, easiest way is Kathy Bradley and the angels.com. And I wish you all the best and the love and light. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Eve, how about you? Uh, uh, Leon Smith Publishing, or just Google Keith Leon S, and uh, there's videos and anything you would want and how to contact me there. Um, and I would say, uh, you make a difference. If you make a difference on this planet, just be by being who you are. And uh, there's nothing that you need to do in order to make a difference. You saying hello to somebody today may have saved their life and you wouldn't know it because they just kept walking, but maybe they felt like nobody saw them and they were going to take their life that day, but you said hello and they thought, well, they see me, maybe other people see me, maybe, and talk themselves out of it on the way home. Like we're, we're constantly making a difference uh, in the world and people forget to tell us. So for everybody who ever forgot to tell you, I want to tell you for them and be a stand for that and tell you you make a difference in this world. It would not be the same without you. So thank you for being the gift of you. Beautiful. Yes, and all of us are here at this time to help move the world into this beautiful new paradigm of heaven on earth, where we can live in peace and harmony with each other, where we can be our truly unique selves. Every soul was created in complete and total uniqueness. In, in this world that's trying to make everybody the same, being unique is a superpower. Allowing your own light to shine is a superpower. So when we keep our focus on what it is that we want to create and who we are as these beautiful infinite beings of love and light, and we let our light shine, we start mitigating the unexpected things and life starts to smooth, smooth itself out. So there will always be some unexpected things, but they don't have to knock us to the ground. We can simply, just like Keith did in his beautiful example, say, thank you, life, for caring about me so much that you will share this with me. <laughs> what am I to learn from this? And then we go in, we learn, and we move on. It doesn't have to be a long process. So thank you all so much. And my name is Lisa Warner for any of you that don't know me. And uh, my website is connectingyoutoyou.com. So thank you all so much. This has been another beautiful Soul Solution Sunday where the soul is the solution. So thank you, Keith. Thank you, Kathy. And we'll see you again next month. All right. Thanks for joining everyone. Love you. We'll see you next week. Love you. <laughs> Bye.